and welcome to Dr. Anima Upadhyaya's Chemistry Lab videos. In this video, we will discuss the various viva voce questions on the determination of zinc in the given brass sample. I am preparing this video on special request from my valuable viewers. Hope this video reaches them in time. So please don't hesitate to subscribe my channel and keep watching my videos. Do like and share them. So when we are determining zinc in the brass sample, the first question could be, what is brass? Brass is an alloy of copper and zinc. What is the valency of copper and zinc? Both are bivalent metal ions Cu2 plus and Zn2 plus. What is an alloy? Alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more metals or non-metals. Can you give three examples of alloys? Yes, stainless steel, bronze, gunmetal, these are some alloys which are commonly used or extensively used. Now you are determining zinc in the brass, but it contains copper also. So which method you will employ for the determination of zinc in the brass? We can determine zinc in the brass sample by titrimetric methods. What are the titrimetric methods that you can employ for the determination of zinc? There are two methods. One is acid-based titration method and other is complexometric titration method. Can you explain acid-based titration method? And what is the solution? used as a standard solution in acid-based titration. In acid-based titration, the sodium hydroxide standard solution is employed. A 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide standard solution is prepared and the test solution is titrated against sodium hydroxide solution and the pH is recorded. What happens to the curve when sodium hydroxide solution is added to the test solution? When sodium hydroxide solution is added to the test solution, we get three equivalence points. What these three equivalence points corresponds to? These equivalence points corresponds to first equivalence point to the neutralization of nitric acid. Second equivalence point is formation of complex of copper ions with hydroxyl ions that is precipitation of copper, copper is copper hydroxide CuOH2 is and third is formation of complex between zinc and hydroxyl ions and precipitation of zinc as zinc hydroxide ZnOH2 is. So how you will calculate copper and zinc in the given brass sample? By writing the reactions based on their solubility products and the volume of sodium hydroxide consumed for the equivalence point is taken and it is calculated in the terms of copper and zinc ions from which we can calculate the ratio of copper and zinc in the given brass sample. Can you explain how you will dissolve the brass to bring it into a solution form? To dissolve the brass, a weight piece of brass is taken in a conical flask to which around 3 to 5 ml concentrated nitric acid is added. When the brass is completely dissolved, 
around 1 gram of urea is added followed by 1 test tube of deionized water and it is kept on the hot plate. When the walls of the conical flask become clear, it is removed from the hot plate, cooled under the tap water and the solution is transferred into a volumetric flask. It is then made up to the mark with the help of distilled water and then mixed well to make it homogeneous. What happens when you add nitric acid to the brass plate? When nitric acid is added, brown fumes are evolved. What are these brown fumes? These brown fumes are the oxides of nitrogen. Why you have added 1 gram urea? Urea is added to destroy the oxides of nitrogen. Now for doing the complexometric titration, what is the standard solution you have prepared? A standard solution of disodium salt of EDTA is prepared to perform the complexometric titration. Why are you preparing a solution of disodium salt of EDTA and not EDTA? I am preparing disodium salt of EDTA and not EDTA because disodium salt ionizes in water whereas EDTA is sparingly soluble. So disodium salt being soluble in water, I have taken disodium salt of EDTA and not EDTA. While preparing the solution of disodium salt of EDTA, have you added any other solution to it? Yes, I have added two test tubes of dilute ammonia to the weighed salt of disodium salt of EDTA. Why have you added dilute ammonia to it? Dilute ammonia is added for the quick dissolution of the disodium salt of EDTA in the flask. Once the salt is dissolved, it is made up to the mark in the flask with the help of distilled water. And it is made homogeneous by mixing it thoroughly. What are the steps involved in the complexometric titration? There are two steps involved in this titration. First step, we don't mask the copper ions. In the second step, the copper ions are being masked and only zinc ions are titrated against the disodium salt solution of EDTA. What is the pH adjusted in this method? The pH is adjusted to around 5 to 6. How do you adjust the pH? The pH is adjusted with the help of acetic acid. What is the indicator employed in this complexometric titration? Xylenol orange is used as the indicator. Can you explain both the steps in brief? In the first step, we take the test solution to which acetic acid is added around 2 to 3 ml to adjust the pH. And then the indicator xylenol orange is added. And the solution is then titrated against the disodium salt of EDT. When at the end point, the color changes from red to green. It is repeated to get the concordant value. In the second step, the test solution is taken to which acetic acid is added, 2 to 3 ml to bring the pH around 5 to 6. To this, sodium thiosulfate solution is added to mask the copper ions. Copper forms a complex with thiosulfate ions forming copper thiosulfate complex and now it is not available for titration and formation of complex with EDTA solution. So only zinc ions are available which are titrated against the disodium salt solution of EDTA and the color at the end point after the addition of xylenol orange changes from red to yellow. So in both these steps xylenol orange is taken as the indicator and acetic acid is added to adjust the pH. Except that in the second step, 
sodium thiosulfate is added as masking agent for copper. How you will calculate the amount of zinc present in the brass sample? So once we have performed the titrations and got the concordant values, we'll take the difference between the two steps. One first step is the copper and zinc ions together we have taken and in the second step copper ions are masked and only zinc ions are there in the solution. So the difference between the two observations will give the amount of zinc present in the brass cell. Can you use some other indicator in place of xylenol orange? We can use erichrome black tea as indicator but xylenol orange is a better indicator than erichrome black tea. What is the color change with the erichrome black tea? It is from wine red to clear blue. And the color change in the xylenol orange is more effective because it changes from red to green when both copper and zinc are present and from red to yellow when only zinc are present because copper is masked with the sodium thiosulfate solution. So out of these two titrations, which is a superior method? The complexometric titration method is superior to acid-based titration method because here the complex formation takes place and complex formation is very rapid and very accurate because it the complex forms only at a particular pH. Therefore, the complexometric titration method is superior to acid-based titration method. I hope you have understood the Viva Vosi well. If you have any queries, please ask the questions by leaving them in the comment box. Thank you for watching.